Hello friends, welcome to Intellect Medigold, where learning is made easy. On this channel, we try to make medical topics easy for you with the help of some mnemonics and animations so that it stays in your mind for a longer period of time. As you all know that a lot of time and effort goes into making each one of these videos, for which I have to take time out of my busy clinical schedule, my patients and also from my family. So if you want to thank me, click on my Patreon link below, sign up and you can donate to Intellect Medicos. I would really appreciate. So today we will discuss about stroke. It is one of the most common cause of disability worldwide. I will explain stroke in terms of its types, causes, risk factors, symptoms, how it can be prevented, how it is diagnosed and what are the treatment options. I will cover diagnosis and treatment part in my next video. So do watch both the videos till the end to get the complete information about stroke. Stroke is an abrupt interruption of blood flow to the brain due to which there is no oxygen and nutrient supply to that particular area of brain leading to death of brain cells. Once brain cells die they generally do not regenerate and devastating damages may occur, sometimes resulting in physical, cognitive and mental disabilities. The interruption of blood flow can be caused either by a blockage leading to more common ischemic stroke which constitutes approximately 87% of all stroke cases or by a rupture of blood vessel in the brain leading to more deadly hemorrhagic stroke which are approximately 13% of all stroke cases. First, we will discuss about ischemic strokes. These often occur with little or no warning and the results can be devastating. These are further categorized into thrombotic type and embolic type. Thrombotic is the most common type of ischemic stroke. A blood clot forms inside a diseased or damaged artery in the brain resulting from atherosclerosis that is cholesterol containing deposits called as plaque which block the blood flow. The other is embolic stroke which is caused when a clot or small piece of plaque formed inside of one of the arteries leading to the brain or in the heart is pushed through the bloodstream and lodges in the narrower brain arteries. The blood supply is cut off from the brain due to the clogged vessels. There is one more entity which is called as TIA that is transient ischemic attack. This is a warning sign of a possible future stroke and is treated as a neurological emergency. Common temporary symptoms include difficulty speaking or understanding others, loss or blurring of vision in one eye and loss of strength or numbness in an arm or leg. The definition of a TIA has moved from time based to tissue based. A TIA typically lasts less than an hour, more often minutes. TIA can be considered as a serious warning for an impending ischemic stroke. The risk is highest in the first 48 hours following transient ischemic attack. Even if all the symptoms resolve, it is very important that anyone experiencing these symptoms call emergency services and immediately be evaluated by a qualified physician. Now coming on to hemorrhagic strokes, it can also be classified into either intracerebral hemorrhage or subarachnoid hemorrhage. In intracerebral hemorrhage, bleeding occurs from the blood vessels within the brain parenchyma. It is usually caused by hypertension that is high blood pressure. In this, bleeding occurs suddenly and rapidly. There are usually no warning signs and bleeding can be severe enough to cause coma or death. Whereas in subarachnoid hemorrhage, bleeding occurs between the brain and meninges that is the membrane that covers the brain in the subarachnoid space. This type of hemorrhage is often due to aneurysm or arteriovenous malformation that is AVM. It often presents with severe headache often associated with nausea and vomiting. An aneurysm is a weakened ballooned area on an artery wall and has a risk of rupturing. Aneurysm may be congenital that is present at birth or may develop later in life 
due to factors such as hypertension or atherosclerosis. An AVM is a congenital disorder that consists of disorderly tangled web of arteries and veins. The cause of arteriovenous malformation is unknown, but it is sometimes genetic or part of certain syndromes. Risk factors It is very essential to know the factors which increase the risk of strokes. You should try to reduce, control or even treat the risk factor so as to prevent its occurrence. Controllable or treatable risk factors for stroke include first, High blood pressure Blood pressure of 140 by 90 mm of mercury or higher is the most important risk factor for stroke. It usually has no specific symptoms and no early warning signs. That is why it is important to have your blood pressure checked regularly. Controlling your blood pressure is crucial to stroke prevention. Second, diabetes. It is a chronic condition in which body is unable to utilize blood sugar. A person with diabetes is around twice as likely to have a stroke as someone of same gender and age who doesn't have any diabetes. This is because the high blood sugar levels contribute to the development of atherosclerosis, that is narrowing of the arteries. It is very important that diabetes should be kept under control. Third, high blood cholesterol. A high level of total cholesterol in the blood, that is 240 mg per deciliter or higher, is a major risk factor for heart disease which raises your risk of stroke. Low levels less than 40 mg per deciliter of HDL uh, also may increase the risk of stroke. Fourth is smoking. Smoking can double or even quadruple your risk of stroke. Some of the chemicals in cigarette smoke such as nicotine and carbon monoxide accelerate the process of atherosclerosis. Clots are more likely to form because smoking thickens the blood and makes clotting factors such as platelets much more sticky. Cigarette smoke forces arteries to constrict, which makes it harder for the thickened blood to move through the vessels. Fifth, carotid or other artery disease. The carotid arteries in your neck supply blood to your brain. A carotid artery narrowed by a fatty deposit from atherosclerosis may become blocked by a blood clot. Carotid arteries are treated by neurosurgeons through carotid and arterectomy, a procedure in which an incision is made in the neck and plaque is removed from the artery, or carotid artery angioplasty and stenting, an endovascular procedure that requires no surgical incision in the neck. Sixth, history of TIA. About 30% of strokes are preceded by one or more TIAs that can occur days, weeks or even months before a stroke. Seventh, physical inactivity and obesity. Being inactive, obese or both can increase the risk of stroke. Getting 30 minutes of moderate exercise five days a week can help reduce your risk of stroke. Eighth, atrial fibrillation. People with atrial fibrillation, a particular type of irregular heartbeat, are at increased risk of ischemic stroke. This is because the inefficient pumping of atria allows blood to stagnate and ultimately forms clots in the atria. Parts of these clots may then break off, travel in the blood to the brain and block an artery, causing a stroke. Ninth, recent research shows evidence that people receiving hormone replacement therapy HRT have an overall 29% increased risk of stroke, in particular ischemic strokes. Now the uncontrollable risk factors include, first is age. People of all ages, including children, have strokes. But the older you are, the greater your risk of stroke. Second is gender. Stroke is more common in men than in women. In most age groups, more men than women will have a stroke in a given year. Third, heredity and race. You have a greater risk of stroke if a parent, grandparent, sister or brother has had a stroke. African Americans are at an increased risk of developing a stroke. Fourth, prior stroke 
or heart attack. If you have had a stroke, you are much higher risk of having another one. If you have had a heart attack, you are also at a higher risk of having a stroke. Signs and symptoms of stroke. They may vary from person to person but usually begin suddenly. As different parts of your brain control different parts of your body, your symptoms will depend on the part of your brain damage and the extent of your damage. The main stroke symptoms can be remembered with a mnemonic B FAST. B stands for balance, sudden dizziness, loss of balance or coordination, E for eyes, sudden trouble seeing out of one eye, both eyes, F for face, the face may have dropped on one side, the person may not be able to smile or their mouth or eye may have drooped. A for arms. The person may not be able to lift both arms and keep them there because of the weakness or numbness in one arm. S for speech. Their speech may be slurred or garbled or the person may not be able to talk at all despite appearing to be awake. They may also have problems understanding what you are saying to them. T for time. It's the time to call emergency services immediately if you notice any of these symptoms or signs. So just remember that while managing a patient of stroke, you have to be fast. Other signs and symptoms may include complete paralysis of one side of the body, confusion can be there, difficulty swallowing which is dysphagia or a sudden and severe headache resulting in a blinding, uh, blinding pain unlike anything experienced before and there could be loss of consciousness. But there may be other causes of these symptoms. So that was all about types, causes, risk factors and the symptoms of stroke. In my next video, I will discuss about the investigation needed for diagnosis of stroke and what are the treatment options. If you like the video, do hit the like button and share this video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe the channel to get the updates about my new video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Best of luck.